for Thursday, April 26th. I'm here with Dr. Georgia Purdom and Bodhi Hodge, and I'm Avery Foley. And yeah, Ken, it's Ken's still Ken's, out. He's still out. Yep. He is. He's in Washington State, I think, today. I don't know where or he's at. Yeah, he had to get there. up early this morning and fly out. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, oh, I do so. want to give a shout out to my husband, Chris. It is his birthday today. Aww. So, Aww. Um, I won't yep. say how old he is. <laughs> 29? 30 40 something. something. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways. Yeah. Okay, and right. um, if you're watching on Facebook, uh, make sure to, we're on Ken Ham's Facebook page, make sure to send those emojis across because the more you do that, the more outreach, the more whatever it is, more audience, more outreach that it gets mm -hmm. out there on Facebook. And, um, and we do have a live studio audience today, so let's give another clap yeah, here. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> yep, so we're doing good there, and... Uh, Ready to start? Okay, ready to start. Go ahead and dive into some we're going to start with some fluff and stuff. So yeah. we do this because people are getting notifications, and we want them to um, get on here, make comments, have questions, and things like that. We'll be happy to try to answer some of those. All right. All right. All right. So this first one, I'm Canadian, so this one's you know special to me Near because I'm Canadian. <laughs> um, Kate Middleton, Prince William, leave hospital after welcoming baby boy. So we have a new prince. They haven't named him yet, but he's arrived safely. So we have Prince George and Princess Charlotte, and now Prince. Prince. Whatever his name is going to be. <laughs> you know, it's Still funny, TV. here in the States, you know, people have the names picked out like six months in advance. You know? <laughs> I'm sure they do. They're just not releasing it. The top two, like, because people are actually like betting on this and putting money down on what the name is going to be. And the top right. two are Arthur and James. So we'll see if anyone's. Yeah. yeah we'll and see. he's right. fifth in line to the throne. So lots yep. of people have to die or abdicate <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> before he'll yes. ever become yeah. a yeah. king. And my son's name is Winston. So I think Winston would be a perfect name for the new prince. Of course you would. Yes. Winston. Yeah. I, can yeah. See that I mean, it has a nice, like, British, like, heritage to well, it. Well, yeah. You got Winston Churchill, right? Exactly. <laughs> and everyone thinks we named him after him. And we didn't. But hey. Hey. <laughs> All right. Okay. This next one, <laughs> James Martin mocked for using 350 pound, that's about $5,000, machine and hand-picked garlic for simple pasta recipe. So this guy on this <laughs> cooking show <laughs> is making this simple pasta recipe to show people how to make it. And Here's it requires how to make a simple pasta dish. using a $5,000 pasta machine, which he claims you cannot make the pasta without the machine. And you also have to go out and forage and handpick wild garlic and use 18 eggs. Hey, I'm the cook in my family. No. <laughs> There's no way I would that? spend hey, that kid, kind of kids, money. What do you want for dinner? Oh, we want spaghetti. All right, give me a, give me a couple hours. Let me go down and get my five thousand dollar machine. Yeah. And what got so. me was how out. Okay, here's what got me about this article was that people were totally outraged. Okay, on Facebook, on all the social media, because of this. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. Okay, so here in the U.S., we have legalized abortion, we have legalized gay marriage. And some states have legalized marijuana, and people are worried about a pasta machine that's <laughs> overpriced. I mean, seriously, people do not have their priorities in yeah. the right place. It's really, really sad to think about yeah. how they're outraged over this. You know, I, yeah. that, that's but that's why we put it in the fluff and stuff. Yes. It just, you know, mind. Ken's not here. And you know, a lot of times when people aren't here, we've been known on Answers News to represent them with certain plush toys and things like <laughs> <Yes>. that. <laughs> and you know, I remember you pulled out a yeah. T-Rex when Ken wasn't here. Here's Ken. That's We're right. going to have a, have a T-Rex plush toy for Ken. Well, Ken did you. He did a, uh, a, a, a prickly bear and a, a bear. porcupine. <laughs> Because Georgia okay. apparently can be a little prickly from time to time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, we've never done one for Avery. And I thought, you know what, you're here today. But, you know, I, I, I searched this, I researched it, and I think I found the perfect, perfect one for you. Are you ready? <laughs> this is spaghetti sauce. It's convenient we just talked about just, spaghetti. It is very but this convenient. is not any spaghetti sauce. This is Prego spaghetti sauce. And, oh, look at that. There's a little one with it. <laughs> do, you, do you have any announcements, Avery? <laughs> well, and this is, my in-laws are in the audience, and this is the first time they've heard this. We're very excited to announce we're expecting our second baby. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know what? I've got one of the first baby <laughs> gifts for you right here. Because most people didn't realize, we, we've been having four people on Answers News for the longest time. And, and so I thought, you know, when you're doing your Answers News, we'll get highlighters for mom and baby. And it even says Avery on it. I mean, what are the odds of that? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, Avery. Thanks. So Ken has been dying to tell this news for like... We've 
forever. He's We've been trying to, try to hint at, oh my word. Secret, because even one time when we were doing this, um, he actually wrote a comment. He wasn't here. Oh, he wrote he was a fishing, comment for he? us to say, and it was it was a kind of a revealing comment about yes. her pregnancy. So I only read half the comment because I'm like, no, we don't want anyone to so. so yeah, we wanted to tell my in-laws See, in person. Now, now so people know wait. why we were talking about babies and spaghetti. Yes. Sauce, babies you know? and spaghetti. Okay. Because I couldn't figure it out until they told. I'm like, how are? What are we doing? Why? Oh, okay. Now I get it. And we're having a fun reaction from the in-laws. Yes. Here, so. My father-in-law is still we on. Can't. The floor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In other news. Okay. In other news. All right. <laughs> Today is National Alien Day. So, <laughs> of course, we have to talk about it. So, <laughs> this comes from Worcester News. Research shows one in two people are believers as National Alien Day approaches. And that day is, yeah. is today, interestingly enough. So they, this, um, st the stats by this study by YouGov showed that one in two people in the UK, Germany, and the US believe there is intelligent life somewhere out there in the universe. Yeah, and, and what gets me again, so there's absolutely um, no evidence for aliens in <laughs> outer space, um, but nonetheless, people will believe that. And, and it, I think it just shows again, along with the pasta machine, people are willing to spend a lot of time and a lot of money mm -hmm. on things that aren't even, you know, relevant, real, yeah. important, you know. But, you know. But, I, I oh, saw the sorry. statistic and I was like, wow, <laughs> one out of two don't believe it. Thank goodness. <laughs> No, it's only 50%. But Georgia, the reason there's no evidence for aliens in outer space is because they're trapped on their planets by that, gravity. That's so no they way can't. Out. That's the next article. No way out. Aliens on super Earth planets may be trapped by gravity. So basically, they're saying yeah. that the, the planets that they believe might be the most habitable, able to hold liquid water, are the super Earths. But these super Earths are so big, their gravity would be so strong, it'd be way too expensive, use way too much fuel, and the rockets would have to be way too big for them to be able to launch in order to do any kind of space exploration so or come and visit us. That solves it. I mean, that's go. why we haven't found any alien Even life, because they're stuck on their planet, <laughs> literally. Or they're dead because of climate change. That was the other one we read a couple weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, yeah, we, we, we just, keep seeing things again, like that. Again, we keep over seeing this over and over. It's all speculation. People are oh, just trying yeah. to make guesses. Well, why don't we find them? They've got to be out there. See, in an evolutionary worldview, they don't want Earth to be special. And that's because mm -hmm. in the Bible, Earth was special. Right. Um, you know, according to the Bible, the Earth was created uh, to be inhabited. That's in mm -hmm. Isaiah 45, 18. You see hints of this mm -hmm. in Job 38, 12 as well. But, you know, according to Scripture, Earth is a unique place. Mm -hmm. This is the place that the Son of God stepped into history to become a man and die on a cross. Uh, to save mankind from their sins. And yet, in an evolutionary world, mm -hmm. you want to reject the Bible and the Bible's teaching. So you can't have the earth to be special. It just needs to be one of many places. And it's, mm -hmm. and it's cool, too, because when you think about it, I mean, how uniquely the earth is designed. I mean, space flight is possible um, on earth. We can mm -hmm. get up and we can see that. And, mm -hmm. you know, you were talking about how we're at a place in the universe where we can actually see that there's other things out there. Yeah. If we were in a globular cluster, there'd be so many stars, right. we wouldn't even know that anything existed beyond that. Right. And so it's really cool that, we're, that yeah. we're at where we're at. Like, you know, again, it just shows God's unique yeah. design of that. Well, there, there's other uh, assumptions involved in this as well. They're assuming that, you know, potential other life are just like us, same size as us, have the same needs as us, and so forth. So, you know, there's a lot of assumptions behind this yeah. trying to show, hey... Yeah. Well, yeah. it's funny because they talk about these problems and then they give a couple solutions for how the aliens might try and overcome their problems. Maybe they mount from a mountaintop. Then they're like, well, no, if there's so much gravity, it would squish the mountains. So there wouldn't be mountains. Well, maybe they use space elevators. Well, that has some problems because, you know, probably couldn't lift something that heavy. Or maybe they use nuclear pulse proportion. Well, then they could have destroyed the whole planet. So they just have all these, like, yeah. yeah so, you know, one so, of the keys the that I did see in here, the, the reason they're looking for certain places in a habitable zone is places that have liquid water. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, if you find liquid water, then boom, that could be life. You know, you could find life in these places, which is a big assumption in and of itself. I remember uh, Dr. A.E. Wilder-Smith a number of years ago was showing that, you know, life forming in water was, was nearly impossible. But uh, one, one of the things that I always thought was neat was, you know, the Bible compares, you know, water with life and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of analogies of that, you know, the, the uh, welling up the water for eternal life. You know, Jesus talks about that. And mm -hmm. in Revelation 22, it talks about uh, uh, the water of life. You know, you, you can have access to that without price, you know. It's a free gift. 
yeah. through mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. You know, Christ is the one who created all the water, you know, whether on earth or in the universe. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he's the one in charge of it. People are looking for water. They're looking for the wrong water, though. They need to be looking mm -hmm. for the right water. And you have um, a resource there you want to highlight I do. I actually have a couple that. of them here. Uh, the first one is uh, Dr. Danny Faulkner did this, Aliens, Fact or Fiction. Uh, this happens to be one of our uh, planetarium programs. Yes. So if they come yep. to the Creation Museum, when this one's showing, uh, this one, uh, uh, they could watch it or they could purchase it as a DVD. It's an excellent uh, DVD, by the way. It's and very in fun. Our Kids answer, will love it. Yep. And in our Answers book, Volume 1, we do have a chapter in here on aliens and UFOs. Um, I don't know how many times people are like, oh, I saw something. I didn't know what it was. Uh, therefore, aliens exist. No. It's an unidentified flying object. That's, That's all right. it is. And yep. somebody I see on drones here's... all the time. People are flying around now. Oh, look. Somebody on yes. here said about the aliens, said, what about their anti-gravity technology? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing. We assume that life on other planets is exactly like life here. Yeah. I don't, that's a very, I don't know why evolutionists would necessarily assume that. I right, mean, yeah. Why would it have to be the same? So... Um, very inconsistent. And lots of people saying congratulations. <laughs> yep. to, uh, Thanks, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Next. Uh, this next one comes from Christian Headlines. The New Yorker calls Chick-fil-A's presence in New York City creepy. So there's this article. You know, chickens are so creepy. <laughs> so, chicken know. sandwiches. Like, chickens can be a little creepy sometimes when they just, like, stare at you with their beady little eyes. But <laughs> chicken sandwiches, <laughs> like. <laughs> so basically, Chick-fil-A opened a fourth store in Manhattan, which I believe is the largest um, in the, the largest. world. And it has, they say it frequently has a line that just stretches down the street because it's mm. so busy. And so this, this um, gentleman wrote an article for the, the New Yorker complaining about um, Chick-fil-A's infiltration and their pervasive Christian traditionalism. Yeah, and they yeah. and they want to, you know, even though this place is extremely popular, apparently a lot of other New Yorkers could care less um, what they're trying they like to sell, so to speak, because they <laughs> like the food um, right. that's there. But um, it's it's really interesting. I think they they say, well, they have an ulterior motive. Well, they're not they're not quiet about who they are and what they're right, trying yeah. to promote. Yeah. Um, it's not like they're being subversive or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and even this, this guy who wrote the original article on this was even going so far as to call it like a mega church. You know, that's what, that's what Chick-fil-A is. I just know yeah. they have really good chicken sandwiches. Yeah, <laughs> and they have great that's service. That's what I like about Like, them. that's what I like about right. them. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, one of the things that he criticizes them for is, and, and they're closing on Sundays as an example of this. You yeah. know, and it's like, like, really, do they criticize public schools for closing on Sunday? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, notice the hypocrisy. I, I mean, yeah. Well, and it's a double standard, too. Yeah. So can you imagine them writing an article like this about a Muslim-owned restaurant? Of course no. not. It would never happen. Never. Would never see or a secular-owned restaurant. Yeah. So yeah. it's just more of that discrimination mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. people trying to discriminate specifically against. In other words, if you don't agree with us, you're, you're totally not mm -hmm. acceptable to society. So just Yeah, well, he, he was yeah. clearly upset with the fact that Chick-fil-A did not support LGBT. Right. That's mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. Was, First, First Timothy yeah. 5.22 says not to take part in the sins of others. You know, I mean, we, we need to be very careful about that. We need to be mm -hmm. praying for people, but uh, mm -hmm. we, we have Planned to be, be very careful of it. Yeah. And a lot of people oh. like Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I'm reading like the Facebook awesome. comments. Oh, there's salads. They're awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah, when we first moved here, my husband wouldn't try Chick-fil-A because he's like, I don't really like chicken sandwiches. And I'm like, you've just got to try it. It's so good. And we went and he tried it. He's like, this is really good. <laughs> so, recipe. yeah. Yeah, in All Australia, right. they call it chook. Chick. Chicken is called chook in Australia. So, huh. hmm. you know, marrying an Australian chook lady, I picked up all this uh, Australian <laughs> lingo. My kids, I want chook tonight. <laughs> Most people, what? Everyone what's else chook? is kind of looking at you a little weird. <laughs> 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 all right. Um, this next one comes from the CBC. Bible camp denied government funds over stand on reproductive rights. So this mm. it comes out of Canada. Um, Southern Alberta Bible camp um, in Alberta is not getting government funding for their summer uh, student program because... Um, and we've talked about this several we've times. About it, yeah. The federal government of Canada has basically made it a litmus test. If you want to get funding, you have to tick the box saying right. you agree with reproductive rights, um, which by that they just mean abortion. You have to agree with um, the whole gender identity, yep, gender, gender expression identity. thing. You're, you're not allowed to discriminate on the basis of that. And so this camp, which has gotten the, the funding for several years now and uses it to pay counselors to come to this camp, right, the doesn't get the funding. Yeah. Does, is not going to get the funding this year. Right. 
Um, I just want people to understand when they say reproductive rights, <laughs> that does not mean the right to reproduce. Yeah. That actually means the right to kill a child. Uh, right. There's other connotations involved in there. Right to change uh, your gender, there. the right to... Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what all, yeah, all this is. Yeah. And, so, so really what happens is, you know, having the right to be a Christian is being sacrificed. Mm -hmm. You got to understand they're not, they're, they're not, uh, you know, coexisting mm -hmm. together peacefully here. And, and they, they're in the opposition officials from the government, system. they claim that the application requirement, the tick the box requirement, isn't designed to undermine, undermine faith-based organizations. But then what is it for? Like, yeah. what is then the point? Why, why bother with it? And even says it's not, they say it's not about the beliefs of the organization and it's not about their values. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's an important that's exactly part of what, what makes is. an organization an organization. Yeah. They have certain mm -hmm. beliefs and values. And so if you're going to make them check a box that, with, that is contrary to their beliefs right. and values to get money, well, yeah, those yeah. are all intertwined. You can't separate See, them. an easy way to show, show the, the fallacy in all this is turn it around. You know, what would happen mm -hmm. if the government said you can't get government funding unless you support um, Christian marriage? That's it. Or right, you right. have to support anti-abortion groups. Mm -hmm. Exactly. See, they'd freak I mean, they, out. There'd be people yeah. out there, yeah, they'd yeah. be like, no, 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 we can't do that. And yeah. what if we said, but that doesn't affect your belief systems. Yeah. yeah. They I claim mean, the requirement was added because some of the money was being used to undermine people's rights. So like a, um, a pro-life group would be using it to pay students to you know, make posters mm -hmm. or whatever. What about freedom of speech? Like yeah. now that these groups don't have freedom of speech to be able to say what they want to yeah. say in a free country. Like mm -hmm. only if you're not see, Christian do you have Yeah. We, we need to understand exactly. the big picture of what's going on. You agree with the government, on. you're fine. Yeah. And, you know, in the western world, many places mm -hmm. from Germany to Australia, United States, Canada and many others, uh, there is this worldview that has taken over from a state standard. Essentially secular humanism mm -hmm. is like you said the litmus test. That is the standard, the religion by which these guys operate. And you must fall in line with that religion if you want to get their funding is essentially yeah. what's mm -hmm. happening. Because yeah. we're not just seeing this kind of stuff in Canada. I mean, Canada is no. kind of a, a leader on it right now. But that's what's happening. This is nothing new. Yeah. I mean, the Nazis and, did this. You have to follow what the Nazis right. believed. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're, you're going against the state. Yeah. Communistic governments mm -hmm. have done this sort of thing. They were forced to follow after these other religions. It's and, nothing new. Mm -hmm. And someone said, you know, this is why Christians should think about um, this is why Christians, I think they mean, think twice about taking government funding yes. because they really down, need to yeah. be supportive on their own um, because I have no doubt that things like nonprofit status and all that will be taken away um, mm -hmm. from many Christian organizations. And I know yeah. several institutions that are um, gearing up for those pos very possibilities because it will affect you know, that. And, and Christians need to be proactive about that and thinking about that like right now mm -hmm. because this yes. is what's happening. Okay. This guy, the <laughs> this, this okay, I cannot take this title. Okay. The fact that this headline exists. This is from the LA Times. Monkey can't sue for copyright infringement of selfies. Ninth Circuit rules. So this is a real lawsuit um, where uh, PETA, the people for the ethical treatment of animals, have basically sued on behalf of this monkey from Indonesia because this um, wildlife photographer had a camera set up and the monkey actually took a selfie of himself. He took the picture himself. And then the photographer published the picture. So PETA says that's an infringement of the monkey's copyright because the monkey took the picture. And it went all the way to the Ninth Circuit, which ruled that it's a monkey. <laughs> well, but the mo okay, now if the monkey had brought the lawsuit, okay, yes. and said, you infringed because, on you my know, rights, I US think we citizen. might be getting somewhere. And yes. over the age of 18. Right. Yes. <laughs> but, but the fact that the monkey couldn't do this on its mm -hmm. own should indicate why the monkey has those, does not have those rights. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And they, they say that at the end, the, the one judge is like, mm -hmm animals can't communicate in our language so who stands in their shoes like why is why does PETA Neither represent this monkey unborn. you know like yep so exactly and they won't yes. let people sue on behalf it's of it's almost like when children. I was reading this I couldn't help but thinking it's almost like they're saying this monkey has more rights than a baby in the womb mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean essentially because they're hearing this in court yep. Right? What about all the babies that are killed that have no, no hearing no in voice. court over yeah. their lives? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's crazy. It's such an upside down world. Such an upside I, down world. I can't believe it went this far. I mean, first off, the, the chimp didn't own the camera. The camera belonged to someone else. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. If anything, it stole, <laughs> it, stole it. it. Yeah, I, uh, exactly. You know, why wasn't it prosecuted for that if it's going to go that far? Uh, you know, when I, when I worked for Caterpillar, you know, for example, you mm -hmm. know, if I used their equipment, went out and did stuff using their machinery, you know, or used their uh, cameras, you know, to take pictures of some of the test equipment and whatnot, Cat owned it. You see, mm -hmm. it was theirs because it was their equipment. And I worked for Cat, you know, so th there's so many issues in this. I, it, mm -hmm. it surprises me it went this far. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that the monkey doesn't even remember that it took a picture or even know <laughs> that it took a picture. Well, it needs <laughs> to stop monkeying around. <laughs>
And the reason, too, interestingly enough, that the court ruled against the monkey was it said, it said, we conclude that this monkey and all animals, since they are not human. And I thought, well, wait a minute. According to evolutionary ideas, humans are animals. We're just a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know, up the scale, so to speak. So in some ways, it's just completely arbitrary that they're cutting it off at, um, you know, the monkey, so to right. speak. Right, yeah, um, yeah. Don't get me wrong. That, that, that's very I mean, Christian of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's very Christian yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, yeah. okay. And that was the worldview of the judge. I don't think PETA would necessarily yeah. agree with and that. And this but, next right. one, I've got to shake my head on, too. Yes, another one. Where we're, okay, this one comes from Big Think. Sweating may be why we became the dominant species on Earth. Get your deodorant out. <laughs> it might be maybe why we're the smelliest. <laughs> or one of the so smelliest. So, basically what they're saying is that... Um, Millions of years ago, digestion consumed all of the calories that we ate, but we need those calories in order for our brains to develop. We need higher density food. So meat is the perfect thing. So how do we get this meat? Well, we... Um, you had to chase down a gazelle. You had to chase down a gazelle. We, That's what they said. We were able to chase gazelles down and kill them with our bare hands because we could sweat and gazelles can't. That... I mean, seriously, I read I'm serious. this. I'm serious. That's like, the article. You've got to be kidding me. You just heard like, it. You should read this for yourself. They, they it's do so say, crazy. They say, the ability to run long distances and sweat so as not to overheat allowed our ancestors to wear out other animals. Sweating was the key factor. Now, here's the thing. A gazelle, I can sweat and though, still overheat. A gazelle has to run, but runs, can run five miles before it wears out. That's a lot of time at a, at a fast yeah. speed. I don't think any human. That, that's why we and have they run like zigzaggy. That. Oh, that's like why our, people have to run so long with their, with their BPA-free water bottles when they were chasing those <laughs> yeah, down years exactly. ago. Yeah, exactly. Hey, no, look, look at this statement. Yeah. It says, millions of years ago, digestion consumed most of the calories we ate. How do they know that? Did they observe that? Have they been able to repeat that? No, that is mm -hmm. not science. I want you to understand that right off the bat. That is just a conjecture. Yeah. An unargued philosophical bias is what that actually is. But notice what they say right after this. So for our brain to develop, we needed a higher density food, meat, obtained from hunting and killing other animals. So you know what they're saying here? They're saying that vegetarians, vegans, stuff like this are actually going against evolution. <laughs> Do you realize yeah. the, the inconsistencies by which they're throwing some of this stuff out there? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, meat eating started after the flood of Noah's day. For people, Genesis yes. 9-3. That was the first time man was permitted to eat meat. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that was what, 4,350 mm -hmm. years ago, mm -hmm. roughly? But one of the reasons for these changes that allowed us to run really fast, apparently, and sweat is climate change because it's always climate change. Well, <laughs> yeah, and the thing is too, like, they said that okay, was a I'm good sorry, thing. climate change is great. Back. This always. seems pretty stupid. I mean, in some ways, to out to try to run down an animal. They, mm -hmm. Again, they they equate early man with stupid man, right? So rather than create, say, a weapon to kill or it, let's one. just outrun right. it. Right. I mean, or beat and, it and that's based on their, <laughs> their assumptions of when we developed the use of weapons. So they're like, oh, well, humans couldn't use weapons at this point, but they need to get meat. So, so, so they're they smart ate some enough. carcasses and they chased down gazelles. They're smart they enough to run something with. down over the course of five miles. But at the same time, if you said, hey, chase down that gazelle or chase down that little rabbit right there that can't run away, yeah. they're going to be like, yeah, let's go for the yeah. gazelle. Yeah. <laughs> like... Yeah, oh and this wasn't just like, they don't think this was like for a short amount of time either. They think it was, according to the article, between 2.3 million years to 200,000 years ago when we finally started using tools. So for like over 2 million years, they were chasing gazelles down before someone so finally realized they could throw a, a rock, rock at it. Like, <laughs> so what would the population of the earth be like if people had been around for 2.3 million years? A lot more than where are they? today. According no, to the they, statistics. They died from running out of the gazelle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> they're chasing the gazelle uh, and the lion takes yes. him out, huh? <laughs> and they also say that sweat acted as a defense mechanism because sweat makes your skin slippery, right? And we were like, but sweat makes skin slippery to us because we have friction-rich skin on our fingers right. and it fills up with the, with the water from the sweat and then it's slippery. So you're a lion me, with its big old claws doesn't care if you're, you're sweaty or not. You're telling me that that like, doesn't affect the lion? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was... It's very much storytelling. Yes. Yeah. And that's yes. What see. We, we got it. Yeah. That one was Somebody one. said on here, I can't even run down my horse. <laughs> so how does I can't that even happen? run down my toddler. But you know what? I bet, I bet people could catch, catch fish and locusts and frogs yeah. and all sorts of yeah, different things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, John the Baptist said, Fish would be and easier to catch than a gazelle, I would think. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't catch either. You would, you would think. I mean, I would be dead, really, yeah. realistically. I'd be dead. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, this next one comes from the New York Times. What, what did all the pregnant ladies chase down? <laughs> <laughs> Slow down, Gazelle. I got to get you. <laughs> <laughs> Ice cream. My father's lost it. 
<laughs> Having cravings? Uh, <laughs> Spaghetti sauce? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get to this next one. Um, this one comes from the New York Times. Bodies remodeled for, for a life at sea. So this was a study that scientists bodies, did. Bodies, or is that bodies? <laughs> oh, it's bodies. Oh. Oh. Come on, I see my name no, no, in There's no there. apostrophe. Oh, no apostrophe. <laughs> um, Maybe so there's more than one of us. <laughs> scientists are doing this study where they're looking at the genes of the, the, the sweet seed seed-dwelling people group in Southeast Asia that are very, very good divers. They can stay underwater for mm -hmm. quite a long time. Um, they can go to really great depths. And they actually found what they believe to be um, changes in the DNA that allow them to do this. And they're claiming, of course, this is evolution. Right. You're the geneticist. And so, well, and one of the things, so my first thought as I was reading this article was, this sounds, it could be some, having something to do with what we call epigenetics. So if they are diving more and staying underwater longer, there can be changes that the environment basically um, inflicts, so to speak, on the genes and how they're expressed and ways in which they're expressed to allow individuals to do things. And, it's and that's a, part of God's design. Yeah, oh, and, yeah. That, and yeah. So, that, so that was my first thought when I started reading this. There's also, but they did do some genetic studies on these people to see that they, they do have some genetic variants that um, might be indicative of certain phys actual physiological changes that would allow them to stay like a larger well, spleen, I think it's still like pretty that. tentative in my opinion. Yeah, I think opinion. they're grasping at some stuff um, I was like not real impressed with the genetic evidence that they present it. Um, but it may not, and so they're trying to argue for these genetic variants, this is all natural selection. Well, the people that could, you know, dive underwater, I, you know, could be able to, I don't know what, I don't know how that makes them survive better necessarily than anyone else because there's other people in this group that don't do this and they're surviving just fine. So I don't think right. it's that. There's other mm -hmm. genetic mechanisms mm -hmm. I think that may be at play here as to why this population has these variants more right. than other people. Mm -hmm. There's lots of mechanisms. Well, th th there's right. a, a whole bunch of people out there that do what's called free diving. That's basically diving without scuba gear, things like that. Mm -hmm. And they train for this. And then there's places right. you can actually go uh, to get deep diver specialty training. And, and what they do is they teach you how to go under and how to hold your breath certain ways. And mm -hmm. the more you do it, the more you practice it, the farther you can go and the longer you can stay underwater. So a lot of other people can do this really mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I see something mm -hmm. like that and I just say, okay, yes, yeah, th these guys have been doing it for a long time. They've been doing it very well. Mm -hmm. um, it, yeah, I mean... God designed us in a particular way so that we can handle all sorts of different things. Right. There's high altitude mm -hmm. runners. They talk about people with calloused feet. Um, you know, I know of, uh, you know, there are some people who uh, train themselves and it takes a lot of training to swim in water that's almost freezing. Yeah. And it's fascinating to see the that. way God designed the human body for people to do. Now, you throw me in that situation all of a sudden, I'm not trained for it. I'm not ready for it. Mm -hmm. And but so it's when, not evolution. That's the that's right. Yeah. It's not evolution. yeah. Someone commented and said, I read that article and thought, cool, but what does that have to do with evolution? And that's exactly yeah. right. They're that's just right. throwing evolution in there. People because... didn't evolve into aliens. Well, right. Yeah. Said, like, is it, it's, isn't this how whales evolved? Will we become the next whales? You know? <laughs> if we keep on going and, and all hey, of that. So. The very first line of this, we are products of evolution. Yeah. You know, yeah. philosophically, that is arbitrary. That's called an unargued philosophical bias. We're seeing that kind of stuff. When people just make a statement like that, sometimes we need to ask a question, prove it. Can anyone observe this? Can anyone repeat this sort of thing? Right. Mm -hmm. no. That's certainly not an no. example of it. Yeah. They're really just talking about minor changes that are occurring in the present. And right. that's just mm -hmm. variation. And so not, I have minor changes evolution. in the present. My hair's yeah. turning gray. Yes, we know. My hair's falling out. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. right. This next one comes from the uh, Sci Post. Scientific reasoning ability does not predict acceptance of evolution among religious individuals, study finds. So um, this study basically found that believing or not believing in evolution doesn't necessarily have any correlation to intelligence or scientific um, training, yeah. training or mm -hmm. literacy or anything like Imagine that. Imagine that. So Big you shock. can be intelligent and be a creationist. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> That's you, you've earned a PhD. You know? I have a PhD. And, and, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, I'm really super smart, but I would say that I'm She's intelligent if you get a PhD. <laughs> um, and so, so, yeah, I would expect this. I mean, totally expect this and, mm -hmm. and believe this because I'm living proof of that <laughs> along with many other people that are living proof of that. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that got me about this article and and... and I agree with this statement. They said accepting or not accepting evolutionary theory as valid is not an issue of intelligence or understanding. It's an issue intricately complicated by religion, self-identity, and worldview. 
that's true. It's about worldview. It's not about intelligence. It's about what is your starting point mm -hmm. for knowing about the path and how you then, and that then affects how you interpret what you see today mm -hmm. in relation to the past. So it really is a worldview issue, whether you're a creationist or yes. an evolutionist. They seem to be applying right. that kind of thinking just to the creationist side of things, right. but it applies either way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was uh, rather interesting. One of the things, uh, one of the people they were talking in here, Jensen, uh, you know, he, you know, he really struggled, you know, because he, he had a religious background, you know, he struggled with the creation origins, mm -hmm. and yet at the same time he was involved in biology and really struggled with the evolutionary origins, which are two entirely different beliefs. And really what mm -hmm. he did is, it took him a while, but he, he essentially mixed those two belief mm -hmm. systems together, those two different uh, religious uh, origins mm -hmm. account. And he said here, you know, he, he, he actually says it's a dichotomous uh, ideas. They're two different ideas right. that they're putting together. Now, he said mm -hmm. he had to wrestle with it, and he had to spend a great amount of time trying to reconcile that kind of stuff to put it together. Now, here's what happens. I've seen a lot of people try to do this sort of thing. They try to take evolutionary origins and creation origins, and they try to put the two together. I want you to understand they're two different religions, and they don't mix. So here's mm -hmm. how people usually do it. They start throwing out aspects of the Bible. Day doesn't mean a day. Evenings and mornings don't mean evenings and mornings. They start mm -hmm. to reinterpret aspects of Adam and Eve. Here he is saying that he believes in the special creation of Adam and Eve, but at the same time, believing that Adam and Eve evolved from ape-like ancestors. Well, let's just think about this in a little bit more detail. If Adam and Eve evolved from a group of ape-like ancestors, and he believes that Adam and Eve were created from the dust, which is it? Right. It, right. They're yeah, mutually exclusive. exclusive. Yes. What they happens really is they're throwing out the biblical parts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what, what would happen if somebody turned that around and said, you know what, I'm going to mix creation and evolution. When I see uh, millions of years, I'm just going to reinterpret that as six days. Or when they say, you know, man evolved from ape-like creatures, I'm going to reinterpret that as dust. Do they do that? Never. Yeah. Never. Yeah. And, and one of the things, too, what, which I didn't agree with, was they said, you know, the big takeaway is that you can be highly, a highly scientifically minded individual and still reject evolution on religious grounds or any other worldview grounds. And here's the thing about that. I reject it not only on a worldview basis, but on a scientific basis mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well. It's not, we have a reasoned faith. This isn't just like a blind right. faith, like, oh, because my religion says this or the Bible says yeah. this, I'm going to believe it. It's because what I see in the world confirms and is consistent with what the Bible says. So it's a reasoned faith. And that's right. what we need to understand. Mm -hmm. That's what they didn't right. get, unfortunately. Yeah. Are you trying to yeah. tell me we don't observe single-celled organisms like amoeba changing into, <laughs> into cows? Mm -hmm. Do we have time for one more? Yeah, let's do one this one. Okay, it's a short one. We'll end on this note. Um, this one comes from USA Today. Humans have killed off most of Earth's big mammals. In 200 years, cows could be the biggest ones left. <laughs> Yeah, we probably so, killed off a lot of those big reptiles, too. Those <laughs> dinosaurs, I don't see those roaming around so much. What this study is saying is that as humans spread around the globe according to the evolutionary timeline, they all the large mammals they met basically became extinct as they spread out. That's until because you have we chased the, them down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because we could sweat. We could outrun them. It was all because we could chase sweat. Down that big Those elephant. mammoths, they can't sweat. Well, <laughs> yeah, we had to the run thing them is, down, grab their trunks. We and know that down. after the flood, the relationship between humans and animals changed, right? Changed. Now there was fear. And honestly, if T Rex I, is walking around in my backyard, I'm going to do away with him. Okay? <laughs> I, I do not want that. That does not sound like We'll get like a call a from plan. Georgia. We're having a barbecue tonight. Yeah. So <laughs> I have a feeling that um, mm -hmm. some of this is related, I think, to yeah. hunting potentially. Yeah. I but mean, like a mammoth. Is going to feed your village. Too. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's you know, diseases. The ice age probably slowed a lot of things down. Lots of down. different climate change um, happening after the flood. So mm -hmm. because they have the wrong starting point and they have the wrong timeline, they're going to come yeah. to the wrong conclusions because they have the wrong timeline for how humans and when yeah. humans spread around the globe, when these animals lived and how they spread mm -hmm. around the globe because right. they're ignoring the history in God's Well, world, you know, so. we, we enacted the endangered species list. Imagine how many things would have died off, not just large ones. Oh, yeah. There's if we wouldn't have enacted loads that sort of, of thing. small animals that have and, died and, off. You know, there's a number of reasons for it. We've destroyed a lot of habitat. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've hunted all sorts of things. You know, I, I, you know, I think of the old dragon legends. You know, most of the dragon legends ended with a dragon getting killed. Right. You know, so I mean, right. this kind well, of thing. Well, it started with the dragon trying to kill the people. So. <laughs> and it will feed yeah. a lot of people. I mean, if you kill a, a, a large mammal compared to a rabbit, let's say, yeah. you're going to yeah. get a whole lot more meat for your mm -hmm. work, you know, right, so yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. So. Yep. Anyway, so, anyway all right. okay. Well, all right, well, that's time, all the so. time we have for today. So we'll be back again. I can't believe you're on... pregnant. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so we'll be back again on Monday. Yeah, we'll see you next week. See you week. then. God bless you guys.